shot to Indy, but to be quite honest with you, I don't care. The the Indianapolis yeah. Colts were in so much garbage against the Patriots. Um, mm-hmm. and, and they're such hypocrites, including their former coach, Tony Junji. They're just yeah, I saw so that. hypocritical. So I, have, I haven't got a chance to watch the video. What was, what, was, what was analyzed on that? I saw that you put a comment on Facebook about that. About Tony Dungy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You, well, you know that idiot. He's on spinning out football every week at halftime with right. Tony Harrison. Mm-hmm. And you know how he likes to walk around and act like he, he's a self-righteous jerk-off who, who's like, he speaks kind of, cause, speaks softly like he's the voice of reason and he's the voice of morality right. and all this garbage. And everyone treats him like he's so perfect. Like whatever he says, everyone's like, well, Tony Dungy said it. It must be good. It must be right. Right. And right. He's got this reputation. It's ridiculous. And he spoke again against Mr. Kraft. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a minute. Now, this happened before any rape allegations. He was just he was dogging Mr. Kraft just for taking Antonio Brown. And th- this was only in response to what Antonio was doing on the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Now. So, so he's on Sunday Night Football on the, the biggest football night of the week, trashing Mr. Kraft. So it's like thinking, wait a minute, you hypocrite. He's the guy who had Marvin Harrison on his team. He, was ta- he wants to talk about morality. He wants to talk about justice and, and all this stuff and what's right and doing what's good for you. Well, how about this? Tony Dungy coached Marvin Harrison. Didn't he have an incident at one of his car washes with a murder? Something to do with a murder? That's correct. Didn't he coach? Pey- didn't he coach Peyton Manning, who showed his genitals to a female trainer when he was in college? Uh, is that not? Is that not immoral? Um, didn't I agree. he? Didn't he um, sell out Bill Belichick after Spygate, but then get caught pumping crowd noise into RCA dome? Mm-hmm. Correct. Which, by the way. I know they did it in 2006 because I was re-watching that game. The NFL, NFL YouTube channel, they, the NFL um, uh, throwback channel, they uploaded the 2006 AFC Championship game, and that was at RCA Dome. And because I've done music my whole life, I can hear things a certain way. I can break down a song by hearing it. I can you know, single right. out anything in, in any kind of audio, and I know mm-hmm. what I'm hearing. Well, I heard something weird. Every time the Patriots had the ball, I heard this kind of feedback loop. It was like a, it was like the crowd would be a certain level, and then it would start over, and there was this little, little drop every, uh, every so often, about every 40 seconds, and then it would restart. And I was thinking, you know what? That reminds me of how a sound would act if I wanted to loop it. If you, right. if you want to loop it in like a song, that's what it would do, and you would have to kind of fine-tune the edges so it doesn't have that drop-off. And this had a drop-off, and I'm like, okay, crowds don't do that. It, it, it's either a constant stream or it's fake. So right. I analyzed it. I put it into my music software program and took a look, and it is absolutely artificial because real crowds cannot replicate themselves every 40 seconds. It's impossible. True. The waveform the waveform would be different every time all the way through. It wouldn't be over and over again. So they completely faked it uh, for sure during that game. So you want to talk about cheating, that's freaking cheating, okay? Because that means that every time Tom's got the ball, he can't hear what's going on. Right. So what about that, Mr. Dungy? That was on, uh, that was on his watch. And then how about mm-hmm. this? He criticizes everybody, all these teams who – who says violates the Rooney rule. You know what the Rooney rule is? You have to uh, interview a African-American head coach. Is that what that is? No. No. Okay. The Rooney rule is that you have to interview coaches in general. The, 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 the spirit of the rule is to get minority coaches some interview time. But that's not right. the actual rule. The actual rule states that you just they just want you to – not leave uh, leave the team to an heir apparent. They don't want that. They want other people to come in, get an interview shot. At, at the very least, let them get practice. Let them practice the interview. But maybe you interview them and you like them, and maybe you hire them. 
Right. So, right. But, but, but the spirit of the role, it, it, it's, a, its original intent was, of course, to get minority uh, coaches interviews. And in fact, that's how Mike Tomlin got hired. They, they implemented that rule, and they interviewed him, not expecting to hire him, and then they did. So that's the spirit of the rule. Now, what happened was that Tony Dungy has been criticizing all these teams, saying that they aren't doing it correctly. But when he left Indianapolis, he left the team to Jim Caldwell, his right. friend. Uh, Jim Caldwell, for those who don't know, he was a black coach. Now, Tony Dungy did not do the Rooney rule. He did not, uh, he did not interview anybody else. He didn't interview any white coaches. He didn't interview any other black coaches. He didn't interview any Hispanic coaches. And there were several. So he violated the Rooney rule because he went ahead and assumed that, oh, well, Jim Caldwell's black, so I can just hire him. Well, no, that's right. not it. What about all the other guys? What about the Hispanic guys that you didn't interview? So see, he violated it because he thought he was in a – he thought he had the moral high ground. Right. So he doesn't care about rules. He doesn't care about anything else but what he feels is right. He's a complete hypocrite, you know, and he he likes to walk around like he's this, you know. It's just oh, I can't stand him anymore. And just looking at him now bugs me. So. Well, being being down here, you know, being in Florida, being in Tampa, he was, you know, he was the the coach that got the Bucks to the promised land and then was let go. And John Gruden came in and then took him to the Super Bowl to win in 2002. Um, and a lot of fans down here will tell you that John Gruden won with Dungy's team. But if you look back at that franchise, Dungy made a That's lot wrong. of change. Or excuse me, Gruden made a lot of changes wrong. before, after he came on. And again, now people will say, well, he played against the Raiders. He knew the team. He knew how to beat them and that and everything else. But when it came down to it, you know, Dungy got the Bucks to the promised land, but just couldn't get him over the hump. And then he went to Indianapolis and had, you know, remarkably probably one of the greatest quarterbacks ever to play the game in Peyton Manning and got a win, you know, in Miami in the rain against the Chicago Bears. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, I mean, you know, he he comes out and comments on a lot of things that he probably should. And how I'm going to say this, keep his mouth shut because he really doesn't know anything about what's going on. And he does criticize the Patriots a lot. And, again, as we all know, everyone hates the winner. And you know what? I, I've been online before. And I've read on websites where every team has caught been caught cheating. So I don't want to hear this crap that the Patriots are the only team in the NFL that cheated, has ever cheated. Go online and look at all the things that the other teams have been caught for. It's just the fact is that we exactly. win a lot. We win a lot. So, again, they're going to point the finger. Because, But then, you know what? Here's how I say it. Keep pointing the finger. Because if we win another Super Bowl this year, or we don't win this year, we win next year, whatever it might be, we win seven. We have the most of any other NFL franchise. And if you want to say that they're all tainted, fine. Guess what? Fine. That's fine because everyone's cheated before. You just some of them don't get busted. If they get busted, they're minor things. It's just we just happen to get busted with Spygate and Deflate Gate. And you can go on down the list and name all of them. But still, in the end of the day, we still find a way to win. And that's because of Belichick yeah. system. So we still find a way to win. And you know, and Mr. Kraft as well. He's the one who you know, puts all the right pieces together. And obviously, you know, him and Bill got together and said, you know what, we're going to bring Antonio here. And you know what might end up happening? We win another ring. I guarantee you that Brown will be one of those players that go, yeah, how about that, Pittsburgh? How about that? I want another yeah. ring. And now I got number seven for the Patriots, the team that's now tied with you for the most title. So take that. Because I guarantee you that Brown exactly. Will yeah. Now, real, real quick, I just want to I want to go back to you mentioned Dungy and the Bucks, right? Mm -hmm. I am getting sick of hearing that. Oh, Gruden won with Dungy's team. I mean, there there's so many people, even the talking heads on ESPN and stuff. They still bring that crap up, and yep. it's not true. And and I'll tell you why. The exact thing that they use against Gruden for that Super Bowl win is exactly the same thing that makes them look like idiots. 
Okay. Gruden knowing the Raiders is exactly why Gruden was needed to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. So Dungy wouldn't have done that. You cannot say that Gruden won with Dungy's team when Dungy couldn't get the job done. He didn't even get them to the Super Bowl. He didn't okay. get them that far. It's not like he got them there. But no, Gruden had to get them there. And he didn't know the other team's plays all year long. He only knew the Raiders. So he had right. to get them there. He got them there. He got the job done. So yes, apparently Gruden was needed to get the Bucks a Super Bowl. So I don't want to hear that crap. You take Gruden away, Dungy wouldn't know the plays against the Raiders. So let's say Dungy got him to the Super Bowl against the Raiders. The Raiders probably win that game. With John Gruden as their head you coach. Know? Yeah, because Gruden would have exactly. still been in. Yeah, so yep. let's say that none of that ever happened and Gruden never leaves. The Raiders win that game, and we all yep. know. I mean, come on. He had the, Rich Gannon was the MVP that year. The Raiders were playing out of their yep. mind. They, they, I think they win that game. So, yes, Gruden – does deserve that Super Bowl ring, absolutely, and they're trying to take it from him all the time. But Dungy, no, what he does is he goes to the Colts, mm -hmm. and he cannot get past the Patriots. So what do they do? The Colts organization, they go and they whine to the commissioner and say, talk about the Patriots banging them up at the line and banging them up in coverage, and we need to change the offensive rules to open it up more, blah, blah, blah. They do, and what do, they, what do you get? They get a Super Bowl all of a sudden. Yeah. And by the way, a Super Bowl that was sloppy as hell. I mean, that, come I agree. On. Very good game. It, 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 it's just really, really, you change. You had the rules changed, and then you suddenly win a Super Bowl, and you think you're something. You think you're something special. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you coach a team like Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne? At one time you had Edger and James, then you had Great. Joseph Adai, and then you had those defensive guys. How White in the world? Do you not get more than one Super Bowl? Seriously. True. I agree with you. I agree with you, Temple. So, I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, with, with Dungy, the, the problem with Dungy going back to the Bucks is he couldn't beat the Eagles. You know, that was the no, team that the Bucks ran in the NFC Championship game many years in a row. And Gruden finally figured out how to beat him. And then not only does he beat him, he beats them on the road in the vet, which is now closed. Now it's like in financial field. They closed the old vet, and he closed it down, giving the Eagles a loss, and then he goes on to beat the Raiders. So I agree with you. I, I know a lot of people down. Again, I live in Florida. I've lived in the Tampa area my whole life. So you uh -huh. hear this stuff. You hear it all the time. And every time, what I mean, the Bucks are off to a bad start, but Bruce Arians will somehow find a way to turn this. I believe he will turn the team around. It may not be here. But in the future, if they give him a chance, he'll turn this franchise back around. Will it be like it was during the Dungy slash Gruden age? Who knows? I don't know. They had a great defense. The Bucks had a great defense during the during those runs with you know with Sapp and Lynch and Barber and Brooks and you can name the whole team basically with that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, again, that will always come up with Bucks fans is oh well. You know, John Gruden won with Tony Dungy's team. Well, no, that's not true. And they need to stop saying that because, like you just said, without him, there would be no ring. And the Raiders would have won that Super Bowl, and there would have been another ring for Oakland. And it wouldn't be – the Bucks would still be looking for a Super Bowl championship. So there you go. People are so short-sighted. They, they think that you can change one thing and everything stays the same except – that one element that you, you switch and they think they'll benefit. It's like the, the thing I always say about Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. They say, put Aaron Rodgers on the Patriots and he's going to win seven, eight rings or whatever, right? No, you cannot do that because it's not a video game. Putting Aaron Rodgers on the Patriots changes everything. It changes mentality, changes the play scheme, changes how things are thought about. Every single thing is now altered. And you, so you can't say that Gruden just won with, don't Dungy's team. First of all, teams change so much per year. You've got right. that factor. But, um, but most of all, like I said, one coach changes things. He changes how the players react, how they, how they think. Maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster, maybe they needed a change. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it had nothing to do with Tony Dungy being a good or bad coach or Gruden being a good or bad coach. Maybe it was just the change was, was needed. How about that? It's just you cannot sit there and say that he, you know, had Dungy been the coach, he was going to win. No, it, it just doesn't work like that. But I was going to ask you, are, are there any 
callers or anyone waiting with questions? Uh, let me see. 